Connect 165 Robotics. We are on lab three. Uh, coordinate system navigation for this, this lab. We are working with our teach pendant and our pendant robot arm again to check out the different coordinate systems available to the pendant robot. And so here we have our teach pendant, and here on the bottom we have the five different coordinate systems that's available for use. Uh, we can get to that by pressing the coordinate button here. A shifting coordinate button will show us the menu and each press of the coordinate button will switch between them. So first we have joint. Uh, joint will move each individual axis on the robot arm. Uh, we've done this in the previous lab so we know already that uh, from top to bottom each row coincides with one of uh, the six axes. So from top to bottom, it'll be from bottom to top of axes. Uh, next we have jog frame, or JGFRM. Uh, that's going to be one of our Cartesian, uh, Cartesian coordinate systems uh, that allows us to move in the three dimensions. Uh, at the same time, we also have world and user, which are also part of the Cartesian a navigation system a world will base its movement off the base of the robot and user will base the movement of the robot arm off of a specific axis so to demonstrate that we'll have our robot arm here we'll set it first to world We're just going to move the robot around a bit, back and forth, right to left. As you can see, uh, the tape is not moving, and that is where we would have our end effector. Uh, it's staying stable, it's staying level, we're able to move the arms in different directions. Without changing where it's facing. This would be very helpful for things like trying to access the tape here. Let's say we had to get into the circle there. Using this system would allow us to move in the direction we want and set the face of the end effector. In a specific direction. Uh, different from the joint arm where we would have to move each individual axis one at a time to get it to face where we want it to go. So the next one is tool. Uh, tool is pretty much uh, based around the TCP which would be the tool center point on a robot. If you had an ineffector we would designate a specific Part or a specific location uh, in front or uh, where the tool would be doing most of its work on. So if you had a gripper, it would be between the two parts of the gripper that hold the object we would be working with. Or here, um, you can see that we remove the robot. So we'll want to point at a specific location and we're moving it left to right, up to down. Uh, that location doesn't change, but when we're rotating the manipulator, uh, we can see that it'll be pointing at a specific point and rotate around it. To keep that point uh, right where we want it to go. So for this, we can uh, line it up pretty easily with our tape and a uh, simple move forward would allow us to go right in between this tape roll. Uh, different from the world coordinate system where we weren't able to uh, change the direction in the face of the TCP. Also different from joint which would uh, cause us to do a lot of different types of arm movements just to line up 
can uh, I can show you actually right here. Joint, if you're trying to get into the tape, there's a lot of different button presses you need to do. You need to line it up, and then if you want to go forward, you can see the top part manipulator or the inflector uh, would not move along with the robot arm. And so uh, many button presses would be necessary. Here we're moving it forward and down at the same time so we can get a good angle. And let's see, we covered joint, world tool. There's also user. There's user very similar to world. On the three axes, you can see this time there is some movement of the inflector. So while it doesn't necessarily uh, keep the inflector and the TCP in place, it does orbit a specific point when moving the arm. Yep, and that is joint transfer, world tool, and user coordinate systems. Lab number three.